I just need one second. I promise. Just one well, second. Well, hurry up! Yo, this is crazy to me. Check this out. So, 2016 is somehow over. Just like that, another year has came and gone. Time is so weird, I tell you. But this isn't an episode about time. This year, we've released two hours, 23 minutes, and seven seconds of explorational content, which I couldn't be more proud of. But, of course, they are far from perfect. So today in Annual Spirit, we're gonna review the official Seth Science series in review for 2016. Starting from the top, what needs to be addressed and why is Las Vegas so popular? So all you thinking about going to Vegas for the first time, make sure you pay attention to this one. Throughout the entire episode, I talk about the Las Vegas Strip being in Las Vegas, but that's actually very wrong. You see, all of this madness happens in the state of Nevada. I'm sure most of you knew that much. Then, what we all know as Las Vegas is in the county named Clark County. Not really important info, but get this. The world famous Las Vegas Strip is actually south of Las Vegas city limits in a town called Paradise, Nevada. In fact, if you've ever been on the Las Vegas Strip, the Las Vegas Airport, or the Las Vegas Convention Center, you are actually in Paradise, Nevada. Even if you've sent or received mail from Las Vegas, it might have actually came from an address in the town of Paradise. Nuts. <laughs> yes, I know, very confusing, but I want to apologize to anyone that might have partied way too hard, ended up somewhere random, then had to ask around how to get back to Vegas, and were directed to some unfamiliar location. <laughs> the Strip is in paradise, guys. Remember that. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. What needs to be addressed in what is fair use on YouTube? Fair use on YouTube. Oh, boy. Listen, the truth is that no one really cares about fair use anymore. No one is talking about fair use, no one is searching fair use, which means either the issue was fixed or everyone is distracted with some new shiny YouTube scandal. YouTube algorithm change. <clears throat> Time is limited and I could have made like three episodes exploring the fascinating brains of like crows or octopi or something crazy like that. We live and we learn, folks. So, no big deal, but more insightful decisions in the future. Got it. Anywho, what needs to be addressed and how does your voice work? At the 8 minutes and 50 second mark, I make the biggest fallacy in all of philosophy. I said, always. Just as the movie was starting, a lady starts walking down. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. She happened to be blonde, so I got nothing against blondes. <laughs> She finally gets to me, to who he's going. I just said to her, listen, miss, couldn't you have done this a little earlier? Well, no. They just put up the sign, turn off your cell phones, find out in the car. Uh. <laughs> the speech you just heard is a man using what's called esophageal speech. As explained in the episode, that's talking from air in your esophagus. And I don't know if you heard it or not, but there was a little pitch changing in there. Les dunce. You know what? I'll accept the dunce hat this year because I really should have known better with that fallacy. Besides, it's keeping my head warm. So, always watch out for fallacies. They're very sneaky and always trying to find ways to get you. <laughs> but moving on. What needs to be addressed and why are emojis so popular? Throughout the whole video, you can hear me say the plural of emoji is emojis. But I guess the right plural for emoji is also emoji. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause it there, because I actually want to challenge this one. Whoa, Jabril Ash, producer of Seth Science, what are you doing here? <laughs> Narrator, shut up. I wrote the script. <laughs> Anyways, emoji is a Japanese word meaning picture character. So when it comes time to translating to English, who makes up the rules here? I say that we get to the bottom of this by taking it to the streets. All right guys, to so settle this is gonna be really simple. All we're gonna do is hit the streets, ask a bunch of people their opinion on the topic, and whoever has the most votes at the end wins. Let's do it. Emojis. What do you think? Emojis. Emoji. Emoji. Emojis, it's emojis. Emoji. Emoji. Oh, emoji. Emojis. Emojis. Emoji. Emojis. 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 I say emojis. 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 It's still emojis. Moving on. What needs to be addressed and why is San Francisco so expensive? 
Now, many had their own opinion on the San Francisco problem, and rightfully so, because it's a very hard situation to judge. But one thing that many pointed out as a mistake was at the five minutes and seven second mark, when I mentioned San Francisco LGBTQ in 1863. You are all correct. Well, only partially. You see, calling it a community may be where a lot of you guys got confused, because it was by no means a community as San Francisco knows it as today. Let's take one last look at the San Francisco timeline from that episode and dig just one layer deeper into San Francisco's history to clear this up. In 1776, Spanish explorers came across land that they later took from the native Indians living there. They named it San Francisco, or St. Francis, then later signed it to the US in 1848. By 1848, the California Gold Rush started and the population of San Francisco went from 800 to 35,000 when lots of people moved from the East Coast to California. And pause there. When the population went from 800 to 35,000, San Francisco citizens were 95% males mining gold, which is said to give rise to a rebellious society that did not want to conform to social expectations. And so, men often took the role of women from cross-dressing all the way to acts of prostitution. And the city seen it as so much of a problem that in 1863, they made it illegal to cross-dress, resulting in fines, jail time, or both if caught cross-dressing. And it wasn't only for men, but women as well. But we're starting to get into an episode for another day. So yes, the LGBTQ beginnings are deeply rooted in US history, as far back as the 1800s and not 1963 as some of you guys thought was a typo. But last on the list, what needs to be addressed and what are the issues with renewable energy? Well, the biggest thing that needs to be addressed for this episode is that Lot said that I was wrong for not talking about nuclear, oil, coal, etc. But I just want to kindly remind you all that the episode is titled, What are the issues with renewable energy? And my whole focus and research was based around renewable energy. So please understand why I might not have focused on your ideal energy of the future. Unless, of course, you wanted me to focus on solar. The runtime was running a bit too long, and if that was the case, then I apologize to you. Also, I want to address Helium-3. I kind of made Helium-3 look like the savior of energy, and I'm very sorry for making it look like that. Because the truth is, we still have lots to learn when it comes to Helium-3. We don't even have the technology to make Helium-3 reactors, nor is it even a plan on anyone's radar outside of what China is currently doing. And the final thing I want to address is that damn mystery. Okay, so from all that I've found so far, there isn't a one single thing to point the finger to as to why we aren't converting more dams. And trying to point the finger at one thing for my investigation is where I made my mistake. There are many, many, many variables at play, from proper funding, marine life concerns, food chain and water disruptions, location problems, infrastructure problems, lobbyist prevention, and many, many more. There are so many different dams to be converted in so many different places that each dam bring their own unique set of challenges and so they must be looked at one by one and not in a general sense as I was ignorantly trying to do. Now that's all that needs to be addressed for this year but man what another great year of curiosity feeding. Last year we ended the year with about a thousand of you subscribed and this year we're ending it with almost 8,000. Feeding our curiosity throughout this year has given us lots of great information such as Vegas is popular because of its incredibly rich history that led to a one-of-a-kind city. Fair use isn't as black and white as it may seem. Your voice kind of works like magic and there are so many everyday things that we don't even realize need our voice. Robots are working on enslaving us all. Emojis are popular because it adds back in rural cues missing from text. San Francisco is largely expensive due to its limited supply but also due to its ever-changing culture. And there are many issues with renewable energy largest one being energy infrastructure and consumption. All of you guys have been showing unimaginable support, which only inspires me to work even harder to deliver you guys the most cutting edge projects possible. And I couldn't thank you all enough. 2017 is a new year for discovery and exploration, and I couldn't be more proud than to kick it off with 8,000 of you guys. Happy New Year to you all, and remember to always feed the curiosity. Brill, it's time to go!